I'm John Shea here, and of course, right now it is September 8th, around 1:50 uh, p.m. And right now we are concerned about a wildfire that's burning in the San Gabriel Mountains. Specifically, it's called the Bobcat Fire. Now, there was another fire going on in Yucaipa that was started by someone that was throwing a gender reveal party, and that triggered a fire that's uh, burning out of control, but that's farther inland uh, or east of us. But closer in, over in the San Gabriel Mountains, uh, on my screen here, I'm gonna circle it here. You see my arrow moving here. This is the Cogswell area. A fire started around this area and it's starting to grow, and so it's probably like seven, 8,000 acres now. And that started uh, back on um, uh, Sunday, about two days ago. So I wanted to show you a few observations here because we're all concerned about that since a lot of us live in this Altadena, Sierra Madre, Pasadena, Monrovia, even the Azusa and Bradbury area, which I'm pointing out in Arcadia. A lot of these communities uh, have homes in these foothills that I'm pointing out in this area here. So I'm gonna first start by showing you what the uh, surface vegetation is. And under this fire map on uh, we, we Fire, um, I'm gonna, I've selected these things, surface fuels. This is what burns. And so when I fade this in, you kind of see where there's green in this area, and there's this area of this purple and brown. And we look at that, and then it's green again here. So it's interesting because this is the, the green stuff here is considered short grass, maybe timber grass or tall grass, but mainly it's this short grass and timber grass. And then you see this sharp demarcation along this line here, and suddenly this purple and, and brownish color is considered compact timber litter. There's a brush, chaparral. Chaparral are these like a, a scrub oak, these small bushes. And basically these things grow in areas where there's um, a short rainy season in the winter and then dry season in the summer, and they continue to grow. And if you look this up, the, these are materials that are easily combustible. So, uh, so you see that it's in this area here, and this is this short grass. Now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is identify where, using satellite detection, where the fires are burning. And as I fade this in, you see where the fires are. The black and the red. The black is something that's a fire that started in the past 24 to 48 hours. And then uh, uh, if they're no longer red anymore, then maybe they're not hot spots. But the hot spots are the red areas, which are the last 12 hours. So we see where it had started down here by the Cogswell area, the, that little lake. It started burning outwards north and to the south, or northeast and the southwest. And this area is already burned, so it's black here, so it's not lighting up right now. The satellites aren't picking up, but here are the hot spots that are showing up on satellite. And so you can see the fires pushing outwards. And that's kind of what we would expect as a fire grows. And it's, but it's interesting that you see that it's growing, that this fire is occurring inside this area of, of the chaparral and the dormant bush and the, the timber litter. And that's where it's growing, uh, the, the fires extending into. Now, one other thing to see here is that, yeah, that, that makes sense. The fire wants to burn where there's fuel, good fuel, and then the grasses are not as good of a fuel, so it doesn't burn as fast. It's interesting to see why is it like that. I'm gonna look at historical fires. As I drag this slider out, you see that that green area suddenly is highlighted by this historical fires, and that's the station fire of 2009 that burned, I believe it was, um, 125,000 acres, or depending on how you select it, um, up to 140,000 acres, 140,584 acres. So that gives you an idea what had happened before in the past, that there was a different fire that had occurred that is creating this, that has created this type of surface fuel vegetation. They already burned away all that chaparral and then what has grown in is that short grass. So that's already burned. So you have this remaining fuel that has not been burned that's easily combustible, and that's where the fire is growing into. You know, there's a concern right now about uh, Monrovia, and there are certain parts that they already had a burn here, but in this area, Monrovia, they're starting to evacuate this area because if you look here, the fuel here ex exists and it hasn't been 
uh, burned away by a historical fire. These are historical fires. I'll leave that faded. In the first surface fields, you'll see that. So what we see is the fire is growing along this area where the fuel is, is rich. And so at risk are these communities. Let me fade this so you can see the communities better. Monrovia, Sierra Madre, up to Altadena. You know, this is about, it started, it was like 5,000 acres yesterday, and today is about seven or 8,000 acres. But uh, as you see, the station fire up here was up to 140,000 acres back in 2009. So this could easily extend into this area. And it's difficult to fight this because these fires, because the terrain is very steep. You couldn't even hike in this area. It's very difficult to hike this area unless there were obvious roads cut into it, but it's very steep. And so uh, they're using aircraft to drop water along this area. So hopefully we can stop this from igniting all this rich fuel. And uh, unfortunately, Santa Ana winds are forecasted for this evening. That's going to be coming from the northeast, which means it's going to blow down towards the southwest, which is in this direction towards Monrovia and Sierra Madre. Uh, one thing that uh, people are doing, or hopefully that wish people knew about, was that the fires, when it comes to homes, it has to do with an ignition problem, not just the surface burning, because a lot of times they find that the fire burns the house, and then the house is what burns the trees next to it. And that's because embers from this fire being blown can travel hundreds of yards, even a mile, and land and then ignite that, that fuel. And so um, embers can fly into homes and get stuck under eaves and certain cracks and then ignite the house. That's why some homes you'll see they, that are right along the fire line will not be burned, but a house that are, that's a block or two in uh, away from the fire will actually be the one that burns down. So it's an ignition problem. And there's been studies showing that um, putting sprinkler systems on the exterior of the home, on top of the roof and on the eaves have shown to protect the homes. There's one study, they looked at 188 homes that had sprinklers on them and a wildfire happened to go through there, burned everything in its path, except 188 homes did not burn. So uh, that's what we're looking at doing is uh, adding sprinklers on top of the house. We do have a little short period of time. You can rig up some sprinklers, put it on the roof, uh, some misters, uh, some sprayers around the property, and that may be your best chance if you live along these foothills. So I want to just record that before I run off to work. And, um, you know, it's 1.57 p.m. right now on September 8th.